Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the cost recovery concept or known to us in financial accounting as depreciation. Now when I say cost recovery, technically what it means is depreciation, but we use depreciation for financial accounting purposes. We use cost recovery for tax purposes, but they mean the same thing. So let's talk about depreciation first since we are more comfortable with the term depreciation. If you are taking a tax course, it means you already took your financial accounting, and as a result, you are already familiar with the concept of depreciation. So what is depreciation? Well, I'm going to tell you what is not. Depreciation is not a decline in value. That's the first answer I get from my students when I ask them, what is depreciation? And I will wait until someone says, it's a decline in value, the decline in fair market value. Well, that's market depreciation. That's not accounting depreciation. So what is accounting depreciation? Accounting depreciation is simply a form of a cost allocation to expense or cost reclassification from asset to expense. Well, let me go ahead and explain depreciation again from financial accounting purposes to kind of jot your memory because it's very important to understand the concept. Remember, cost depreciation is based on the matching principle. What are we matching? Well, let's start with a simple example. Let's assume we purchase a delivery vehicle, a delivery car, and we paid $10,000. How do we treat this asset? How do we treat this vehicle? First, we are going to have an asset that's worth $10,000, basically the cost of this asset. And for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna assume there is no salvage value. Then we're gonna assume for financial accounting purposes, this asset would last us five years. So what we do is we'll divide $10,000 by five and we'll get an answer of 2,000. What do we do? We're gonna take this $2,000 every year from this asset, remember this is an asset, the car is an asset, and expense, expense this $2,000 over a period of five years. So what did we do? We allocated the cost to expense or we reclassified the cost to expense. So every year what's gonna happen, $2,000 of the asset becomes an expense. This expense, we call it depreciation expense. Now, why did we allocate 2,000? Well, because we are assuming that this asset would service the company equally over five years. So we are matching the expense to the period that it's servicing over five years. Well, if you know depreciation, we have many different types of depreciation method. I'm using here the straight line method. Now, so depreciation is the recovery of cost or business or income producing asset through deduction. So when it comes to taxes, it's the same concept, except we are not doing any matching here. For tax purposes, we don't care about matching. What we care in taxes, we want to take the depreciation for the sole purpose of what? Of getting a deduction. We like deduction in taxes. Why do we like deduction? I know I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to be repeating myself because deduction lower taxable income. What does that mean? Taxable income lower our taxes. What does that mean? It's less money in our pocket, more money in our pocket, less money in the government pocket because we want to save on our taxes then we will take depreciation. That's why we like depreciation. So depreciation or cost recovery is the term that we use for tangible asset. What do we mean by tangible asset? Assets that we can see, we can touch, computers, cars, uh, furniture, office building. Those are actual assets you can touch, you can see. Then we have the term amortization. Amortization is the same concept. However, you are dealing with, with an intangible asset like a patent, a copyright. Then we have the term depletion. We use depletion for natural resources, a different type of assets. We don't depreciate them, we don't amortize them, we deplete them. Same concept. All these three terms are basically the same. They are a form of cost allocation to expense or a form of cost reclassification from an asset to an expense. Potato, potato, it's the same thing. So that's the concept of depreciation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. 
My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now, how does depreciation or cost recovery affect our basis? So it's important to just kind of learn why depreciation is important. Well, for one thing, it's gonna give us a tax deduction, true, but also depreciation will affect our tax basis. So depreciation gives you a deduction now, but it's gonna reduce your basis. What does that mean? Remember the car that we purchased in the prior example. The car started at 10,000. After the first year, we took 2,000 of depreciation. This 2,000 of depreciation would reduce what we called in financial accounting, the book value to 8,000. Now for, for tax purposes, we call the, the 8,000 the basis. It reduces the basis. The basis was 10,000 initially, then after the depreciation, it reduces the basis to 8,000. Now in year two, we'll take another 2,000, we'll take another 2,000, and it's gonna reduce the basis or the book value for financial accounting to 6,000. So as you are taking depreciation, you are enjoying the deduction, but you are reducing your basis. So what's gonna happen in the future when you dispose of the asset? Let's assume you sold, let's assume just for the sake of illustration, after five years, you know, the basis will be zero because you fully depreciate the asset. Now you're gonna sell this asset for $3,000. Well, when you sell the asset for $3,000, your basis is zero because you used up all your basis. Therefore, the whole 3,000 will be a gain. So it's gonna increase your gain when you dispose your asset. So simply put, some once the depreciation is taken, it reduces your basis. How is that gonna affect you when I sell the asset in the future? It's gonna increase my gain. So it's subject to re recapture. So eventually when I sell it at a gain above the basis, some of, that, some of that gain will be taxable. If I don't, it will be a recover of basis. If I don't sell it more than the basis, then I'm recovering my basis. It's called rec recover of asset. Now, how do we compute the depreciation? We're going to take the basis of the asset, which is usually the first year is the cost. Time is a depreciation rate, some percentage, some depreciation rate. Where do we get this depreciation rate from? Don't worry, we're going to get to that in order to get depreciation expense. So the rate in contrast to financial accounting, for tax purposes, the rate will be given to us. Just give me a few minutes until I get to that slide to get the depreciation expense. And depreciation start when the property is placed in service. Usually when the company buys an asset, they usually place it in service almost immediately. Now, there's an important concept we need to understand for depreciation for tax purposes. That's a little bit different than financial accounting. The first is we need to differentiate between two types of property. We have realty property and we have personality property. I don't know if I'm pronouncing them right or wrong, but here's what's gonna happen. Realty property, I'm gonna call it real property and personality property, I'm gonna call it personal property. So we have two types of property, real property and personal property. So we need to know what each one is. What is real property? L real property include land and buildings and anything that's permanently aff affixed to the land, like a warehouse, an office building, a regular building, a rental building, this is, these are real property. It means you cannot, they're not movable. Sometime, the another term that they use, not movable, it means you cannot move them. You cannot move them. So what is personal property? Well, easy. Anything that's not real property is personal property. Anything that's not real. This include furniture, machinery, equipment, and many other assets, vehicles, computers, so on and so forth. Personal property should not be confused with the term that we were going to be using later, personal use property. So notice the word use here. It's very important to understand the word use. Personal use is something totally different. Personal use is held for personal use rather than use in a trade or a business or any income producing activity. So what does that mean? Well, I could have two cars. I could have this car and this car could be for personal use where I can go on vacation, take my family on vacation, uh, just go to the grocery store, shop for personal use, so on and so forth. Or this same car could be used as a personal property, which is for business purposes. So if it's a personal use property, we don't, we don't depreciate personal use property because we, we cannot take a deduction for that. But if the same car could be used for 
business purpose, then it's called personal property that's subject to depreciation. Now, let's talk about briefly about converting a personal use asset to a business. So sometimes you might have this vehicle, you bought it, you were using it for personal use, then you switch from personal to business. This could happen. When the asset intended for personal use are repurposed, repurposed means now it's used for business or income generating activities, the basis for the recovery or loss deduction so now we need to depreciate this asset. How do we determine this? Or if we need to sell it, how do we determine the loss? We determine it by, by using the lesser of. You would look at the adjusted basis, how much you paid for it, or the fair market at the time of the conversion. Because when you convert this car, let's assume I bought this car for, uh, for the sake of illustration, 25000 And we're going to consider this my basis. By the time I converted this car from a personal use to a business use car, the value was 13,000. Well, I would use the lower of the two. I would start saying 13,000 and taking depreciation based on the 13,000. So tax recognition cannot be applied to losses incurred before. So I'm gonna start basically saying, this is my asset, 13,000, starting to depreciate the asset and account for any losses down the road based on this basis. Now, a main difference between tax purpose depreciation or cost recovery and gap financial depreciation is the way we come up with that amount. For gap, remember, for gap, we estimate. Estimate means we, we determine what's the life of the asset, how long it's going to service us, if there's any salvage value or not, so on and so forth. Well, guess what? IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, which is the cost recovery system, you cannot use your own estimate. The government... For personal asset, they have one, two, three, four, five, six classes of assets. Three-year asset, five-year asset, seven-year asset, 10-year, 15, and 20. So you cannot choose how many years, for example, an automobile service you. Okay? You cannot choose that. The IRS will tell you, for example, computers, is a, it has a five-year life. They will tell you. Now, what happens if you have an asset that's not listed? Well, for example, a computer, the closest thing to a computer is a tablet. I would say a tablet is a computer, therefore it's five years. If they don't have tablets specifically. Or I can call the IRS and say, look, I have this asset. Uh, what's the closest thing to it? So the point you have to understand here is they will tell you what's the property class of the asset. That's one. Also, as I said, we have 3, 5, 10, 7, 10, 15, and 20 years. We also have to know for the asset that are 3, 5, 7, and 10 years, we would use the 200% double declining balance. What does that mean? If you remember the double declining balance from, uh, from financial accounting, you will take 1 divided up by the life of the asset times 2. You'll get to the double, 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 base, double declining base, double declining base. You'll find the rate for that. For the asset that are 15 and 20 years asset, you will take one divided by the life and you multiply it by 150. You don't have to know the rules or, or the formulas because the IRS will give you the tables. So remember, three, five, seven, and 10 years would use the 200% the double declining balance or declining balance. And the 15 and the 20 years, they would use the 150 declining balance. Then we have to learn about convention. What convention do we use? Don't worry, I'm going to cover one of the convention here. But we, we either have the half a year convention or the mid-quarter convention. What are those? Just wait a few more minutes. On the next slide, we'll start to work with this. Now, the double declining balance is used with a switch to the straight line may be elected. So what does that mean? It means after you double declining balance, after it goes down, the double declining balance take more depreciation up front. Let's, let's first look at the straight line. If we're talking about straight line, we have year one, year two, year three, year four. If we're using the straight line, and let's assume the depreciation per year is 2,000, go back to that original car, every year is 2,000 for five years. This is the straight line method because it's a straight line. It's the same amount every year. If we are using the double declining, the double declining, the depreciation will start high then we'll go down. We'll go down quickly, but it will start high. You'll take more depreciation early on in the life of the asset. What they're saying is once you get once once you get to a point where straight line is greater than your figure, you could switch to the straight line. Just you need to know this. 
okay why they want you to max your depreciation that's that's what they want you to do now let's talk about the concept of half a year depreciation half a year depreciation is a convention and the rule is this the general rule is for personal property we assume it's a half a year convention unless it's not half a year what does that mean we assume that assets are put into service or disposed of in the middle of the year irrespective regardless of the time they were placed in service or disposed of so what we assume is this we assume then when the asset is purchased so, so we have a year here this is a, this is a year we purchase an asset in february we assume the asset was placed in service mid-year again in a particular year we sold the asset in july we assume it sold mid-year june june 30th okay so we assume this is the half a year convention purchase and place an asset in service on march 15th if the tax year is december 31st it's assumed as we placed it in service june 30th so simply put the first year will take a half a year six months of cost recovery in year one and six months of recovery in the other half of the year when we sell it let's work an example to see how this works on march 23rd john purchased an asset in the five-year class this is the five-year class paying 100,000, and that's the only acquisition that john made determine the cost recovery deduction for x2 and x3 then let's assume john sold the asset in x3 how much depreciation we will take so how do we compute the depreciation we're going to take 100,000 times a five-year asset this is year one and it's 20 percent equal to 20,000 hold on a second if we look at the double declining balance if we'll take one divided by five times two the rate should be 40 percent why is the rate 20 percent the rate is computed for you don't worry about this why because in the first year we assume it's a half a year so that's why it's 20 percent don't worry the irs gave you the table i'm just in case you're wondering why it's 20 percent and not 40 if i'm using the double declining 200 balance because the first year it's a half a year the second year how much depreciation do i take 100,000 times 32 percent which is 32,000. what did i get the 32 percent here okay so the first year they computed for you let's assume john sold the asset in 20x3 how much depreciation do we take in 20x3 100,000 times 16 percent why 16 percent 16 percent is half of 32 remember the year that we sell we sell the asset we assume we sold it half middle in the middle of the year therefore if it's in the middle of the year we take half a year of depreciation half a year of depreciation half of 32 is 16. so don't worry the irs will make the adjustments but remember they only make the adjustments for the first year and the last year so if you sell the asset in the middle of the other year year two three four and five and why do we go to year six because we take half a year in year one and we'll catch up half a year in year six in the other years they're giving you a full year so remember if they're giving you a full year you have to multiply the full year percentage by 50 percent so i took 32 percent times 50 percent or times one half gave me the 16 percent which i used in case i sold the asset in case john sold the asset in year x3 so this is the half a year convention is this the only convention no we have a half a year we have a mid-quarter convention we have to learn about this so in the next session this is what i would cover but what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs true false notes that's going to help you understand cost recovery or depreciation the technical word is cost recovery for tax purposes good luck study hard invest in yourself whether you are a cpa candidate enrolled agent or an accounting student and stay safe